Hello, my fabulous friends. Okay, so before I get into the down and dirty alcohol and dyskinesia story that I'm gonna share with you, I have a small quick favor. Think this, $10 times 100,000 people. $10 times 100,000 people equals $1 million for this foxy fox here known as Michael J. Fox who has Parkinson's. I have Parkinson's, for those of you who don't know. My mom just was diagnosed with Parkinson's. If you watch my videos, if you're a Michael J. Fox fan, if you have Parkinson's, if you love Back to the Future, or if you just have $10 and you're like, you know what, Michael J. Fox is awesome, I wanna donate to his foundation, $10 please to a sweet way to help find a cure for Parkinson's, The Wiggles Project. I think I'm around 2,000 now, so I've got a long way to go, but, if there's anywhere this can happen, it is online, it's on YouTube, and it is here, hashtag 10x100k. And spread the word to everybody that you can. Please help uh, this go viral, and let's raise $1 million for the Michael J. Fox Foundation. Okay, so let's get to the fun stuff, huh? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, gin is one of my favorites. Beer is like my day-to-day -day weak spot, and I, I don't drink every day. And I'm not trying to make light of it. I have, I've lost two family members to alcoholism. It's, it's devastating and it's a serious problem. And it's something that I struggle with. I've been trying to, to, to reduce the amount that I drink for a long time. I've basically spent my life in the restaurant business and we've had a lot of fun in the restaurant business drinking. It's just, it's part of the culture. And so it's very hard to, even though I'm not in it anymore, really to get away from it. So. You know the Batman from uh, the 60s theme song that like, Batman, Batman, Batman. Well, I'm thinking hot flash, hot flash, hot flash. Oh my God, it's so hot. Ugh, okay. So, it'd be really nice to have a nice, cold, crisp beer right now because it is so hot, but I'm not going to um, because I have had a lot of beer <laughs> the past five days and I've tried, and I am still trying. It's, it's a process to to mostly become sober, to totally become sober. I'm working on it. But what I wanted to share with you in this video is how alcohol affects me, especially with dyskinesias and sleep. Alcohol kills my ability to sleep. One of the things that I have found incredible with Parkinson's disease is how in tune I have become with my body. When my meds start to kind of, you know, fade, I can feel it like the second it starts to happen. When they start to kick in, I can feel it the second that it starts to happen. Those transitions, it's just, it's, it's pretty surreal and it's, it's also amazing and I'm so thankful for it. It's the same way with my uh, experience with dyskinesias. So over the time now that like I've been trying to, you know, stop drinking or at least cut back, the very least cut back. So like I'll have like a five day stretch where I don't drink any alcohol. And then I'm, I'm great, uh, you know, I'd, I'd say overall, like when I do have dyskinesias, they're pretty mild during that time when I'm not drinking. Then let's say I take one day after my five day break, and I'm like, ooh, you know, okay, I'm gonna have three or four beers today. And so I have those three or four beers. And then if the, the next day, if I don't drink and continue for the next five, um, you know, on again, no drinking, it's like, my body won't even notice it. Like I won't get more dyskinetic. But what does happen is that, you know, so after that five day streak, I'm feeling so good. I have three beers one day, right? And then I continue to drink. Then the next day I have another three. Then the next day I have another three. And that is where the problem begins. And what's so fascinating to me is that like each day successively, I, I'm sure that there could be an actual way to measure the magnitude of my dyskinesias, but they progressively get worse and worse and worse. And so today I have a little film um, that we took today during lunch at one of our favorite restaurants. I was extremely dyskinetic. And it was because we had spent the weekend drinking. And so I went through one of those phases where it just got worse and worse and worse. And now of course, you know, I'm back. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna be good. I'm gonna be good, it's Monday, no alcohol. And you know, I'm, I'm trying so hard, but I have to say, I don't work for these guys. I don't, you know, but I, oh, if you've ever come across these, these mango gold wild wonder, like this is amazing stuff. It's expensive, unfortunately, but like, oh, it's like some Chinese brew tonic with like wild herbs. It's just like, oh, it's so good. So have something 
during the times when you're trying not to drink. But anyways, that's what alcohol, that's how alcohol affects my dysthesias. It makes it worse. It wasn't like that in the beginning because again, if you don't know my story, I owned a pub when I was diagnosed and I continued to drink. It's just, it's what you do. Most people do when you are in that business and it's just really hard not to because everyone who comes in, it's always like, woohoo, oh my God, I haven't seen you in so long. Let's have a beer. And yeah, so I thought I'd share that with you and see if anyone else out there experiences kind of like that progressive building of like the intensity or magnitude of their dyskinesias as they drink more and more. And then have you taken a substantial break, like five days? Five days might not sound like a lot for people who don't drink, but for people who do drink, it's a big deal when you make it five days. Um, and I feel like you really need these breaks in between to be able to like compare how different is it? And yeah, and you know, I could be the only one out there who's experiencing that progressive intensity with the, with dyskinesias, but like in a way, it's like if you think about it, it's almost as if like the more alcohol you're consuming, despite how much water and all that stuff you consume too, it's like it's getting into the brain. It's like more and more and more of it. So anyways, um, oh, it's still so hot. Thank you so much for watching. And if you can donate that $10 and just spread the word, I feel like 100,000 people, I know it's a lot, but it's really not. And I just know that there's 100,000 100, you know, people out there who love this guy, love this guy. So yeah, it's for his foundation, it's for Parkinson's research. We totally need it, we can do it. And I thank you for watching.